Okay, so in this video, I want to begin our discussion of lipid digestion and absorption by starting off specifically with digestion. So we're going to start off out here with some dietary lipids, including mostly triglycerides, as well as some cholesterol, cholesterol esters, free fatty acids, and fat-soluble vitamins. And they're going to enter the mouth. And in the mouth, there's no actual digestion of the lipids, right? So there's no lipid digestion here, okay, in the mouth. So they're gonna continue on through and enter the stomach where a few different things happen. Okay, so let's scroll down just a little bit. Okay, so in the stomach, we're gonna have the, the churning and mixing of the ingested lipids. And the whole idea there is that the stomach's gonna kind of shake around and move and mix things up. And that's gonna break up these large globs or droplets of lipids into a bunch of smaller droplets. So we have this large glob here and the mixing and moving around of the stomach is gonna make that into a bunch of smaller droplets. And that's important because it increases the surface area for digestive enzymes to act on. And so it makes it easier for things like lingual lipase and gastric lipase in the stomach to go through and digest um, triglycerides uh, into fatty acids and, and two monoacylglycerol. So what's happening here is that these triglycerides are having um, the acyl groups on, on carbons one and two of the glycerol backbone being removed as uh, free fatty acids. And then the rest of it ends up uh, being a monoacylglycerol, a two monoacylglycerol, because the two meaning because that acyl group is on carbon number two. And so lingual lipase is named um, for, the, for the glands at the back of the tongue, and um, gastric lipase is named for the glands at the, in the gastric mucosa. Now also in um, the stomach, we have the emulsification of the keeping apart by dietary proteins. So in addition to taking these large globs and turning them into these uh, a bunch of smaller globs so that it makes it easier for enzymes to act on, we gotta make sure that those, those tiny droplets stay apart from each other. And so um, that is done by dietary proteins. So typically when a person eats a meal, they're not just eating lipids. Um, they're usually eating with, um, you know, they, they're usually some carbs and proteins along with, their, uh, with, with whatever it is they're eating, typically of course. Now, um, when, when proteins reach the stomach, the acid will kind of denature them and they'll kind of be freely flowing kind of like polypeptides. And um, those amino acids, there are some, those amino acids that make up those polypeptides are both polar and nonpolar. And so there's like this hydrophilic hydrophobic separation that allows them to interact with some of these lipid droplets. And when they do that, they kind of form a structure that looks something like that. This is just kind of my visual, but the whole idea here is that the blue part there is, um, is protein that blue stuff there is protein um, or denatured protein like polypeptides and they're keeping apart those lipid droplets so they don't come back together and just form one of these again okay so in addition to breaking up that large globlet into a bunch of small uh, droplets um, we want to keep those droplets apart so they don't come back together okay and so um, that also of course allows the enzymes to digest those lipid droplets more, re more readily more, more easily um, also, there's this idea of gastric emptying. So some of those digested contents are going to flow with the chyme into the small intestine. And that's going to be done uh, slowly from the stomach to the small intestine. And that's important to allow proper subsequent digestion and absorption in the small intestine. Um, so the gastric emptying is actually controlled. It's actually slowed down specifically um, by cholecystokinin or CCK in response to lipids beginning to, um, beginning to reach the small intestine which is next.